Hey folks, if you'd like to support me or this channel, Moose University, in creating more video tutorials, then please consider making a financial contribution at my website, MoofUniversity.com. Thanks and enjoy the video. Okay, so triacylglycerols or triglycerides, what are those? Well, in one word, they are fats. That's, that's the short answer. The more specific answer is that triacylglycerols or triglycerides are three fatty acids connected to a glycerol backbone glycerol backbone by ester linkages. So how does that look? Well, okay, so here I've drawn this three carbon molecule and this molecule is glycerol. So this three carbon molecule here got one, two, three carbons, that is glycerol. So glycerol will function as the backbone for this overall structure that we're going to draw. And we're going to take glycerol and three fatty acids, which I've drawn here. I don't know why I put that in that color. Okay, so three fatty acids that are drawn here. And of course, the uh, R groups are labeled as one, they're labeled as one, two, and three because they could be different. They don't have to be, but they can be. Now what's going to happen is that we can imagine a dehydration synthesis. So we're going to basically going to take this OH and we're going to take this H, that's H2O there, and then here the same thing, and then here the same thing. We're going to take those and we're going to remove those as three waters. So this will be a dehydration synthesis here dehydration synthesis dehydration because we're losing water and synthesis because we're making a bond right we're making we're we're linking the glycerol backbone to these three fatty acids and we get this molecule here and so these linkages here labeled in pink are the ester linkages right there's an ester linkage there there and there right all three of those are ester linkages and an ester, if you aren't already familiar with it, is when you have an R group bound to a carbonyl that's bound to an OR group. Okay, and of course those R groups can be just any hydrocarbon chain, and um, they they can be the same. They could be different. But this is basically an ester functional group. And so here we've got the basically these three fatty acids that are linked via an ester linkage to this glycerol backbone. So this molecule here is a triacylglycerol, okay, or TAG, or a triglyceride, TG. Now both of those terms mean the same thing, but let's break down the name, triacylglycerol. Triacyl, tri means three. Acyl refers to this group here. An acyl group is basically just a group that has um, an R group bound to a carbonyl, and the that that sort of group there, if we cut that off, if we link that to anything, that is called an acyl group. So we have a triacyl group. There's there's one, two, three acyl groups, and they're linked to a glycerol backbone. Okay, the common name is triglycerides. That isn't really broken down in the same way that triacylglycerols is, but they're the same thing. Now those three those three uh, fatty acids that are attached as acyl groups. They can be saturated fatty acids or unsaturated fatty acids. We talked a little bit about this in the fatty acid video about how fats that contain saturated fatty acids will be solid, right? And fats that contain a higher concentration of unsaturated fatty acids will be uh, liquids. So things like lard or animal fat will be solid, liquid, that'll be things like oils. Okay, and this is of course provided at room temperature, right? Okay, so now that we know the structure of a triacylglyceride or a tri or triacylglycerol or triglyceride, what are their what's their purpose? What's their function? Well, their main main function that a lot of people are aware of is fuel storage. They store energy, and that should make sense because we've got these these acyl groups are coming from fatty acids. And uh, fatty acids we know can can be broken down for energy. So if they're if this is their storage form, this is when they're not being used for energy. So this is a mechanism, a, a way to fuel their, uh, or excuse me, store fuel. The other thing that triglycerides are important for is for insulation. 
we'll talk about both of these functions in more detail now. Okay, so if we think about energy storage or energy source, um, fats, triglycerides, are a super efficient energy storage form because um, because we know that fatty acids are highly, highly reduced molecules, right? They're electron rich, and that's something we talked about in a previous video. They're highly reduced, and so they're highly efficient in the amount of energy. They're, they're, they're really dense in the amount of energy they have, right? And so when we take these fatty acids and we store them in triglycerides, that's a very, very efficient storage form. We're packing a lot of energy into in one location, one in one structure. Now, fatty acids if they are roaming freely, right, if we have free fatty acids, they would mess with pH levels. Well, because they're acidic, right, fatty acids are acids. So we don't want fatty acids to be roaming freely, right, roaming freely. Uh, would, they'd mess up with the, P, the pH levels. We don't want that. So triglycerides are basically the solution to that problem, right, because we don't want our pH levels to be altered in any way because even the slightest change in a pH uh, in our body could be detrimental to proteins and could really lead to death. Uh, so triglycerides are the solution to that problem when we have fatty acids. If we have an excess of them, we can store them in these triglycerides. And in the, the, the fatty acids you see here um, in the structure, in the triglyceride structure, since these fatty acids are no longer, you know, um, in their in their either acid form or carboxylate form, they are stored in the structure. They'll no longer uh, alter pH levels. Now, triglycerides are stored in these things called adipose cells. Adipose cells, and they're specifically called adipocytes. Adipocytes. So I've kind of drawn that over here, uh, and I'll get to that diagram in just a second. Uh, they contain these things called fat droplets or fat reservoirs, and that's what I've drawn here in those in that little brownish yellow color here. So these are fat droplets or fat reservoirs, and these things actually will get bigger as the amount of triglycerides grows, right? So here we got this fat reservoir. Uh, we'll call it fat reservoir A, and going to B, B has many more triglycerides in it. It's just sort of grown or swollen up. So uh, these get bigger or larger with more triglycerides. Now, uh, triglycerides are also another another in detail about them is that triglycerides are hydrophobic and anhydrous. Now, you might think those two words mean the same thing. Hydrophobic just means water fearing, right? So it doesn't really like to hang out with water. But that leads into this idea of it being anhydrous. Not only does it not like water, it just does not need water to to exist. Like it could it is so it is so hydrophobic that it kind of just wants to stay stay away from water. It doesn't need to be dissolved in water. And uh, it's in these fat reservoirs. And this is actually really important. This this contributes to the efficiency of the storage form because there's there's this benefit over over glycogen, right? Because glycogen is also a storage form of energy, right? That's just a bunch of glucose is linked together in, these, in the alpha-1,4 linkages. But because triglycerides are hydrophobic and anhydrous, they don't need to be dissolved in water. They don't have to be hydrated in the way that glycogen does, because glycogen being polar, it needs to be hydrated. It is hydrous. Um, so triglycerides don't have to carry the extra weight of water. So if they're not hydrated, they, they, they don't... Basically, the, the reason why this is beneficial is that if we didn't have triglycerides and we only ha could store our energy in the form of glycogen, we would need a lot of water to hydrate that glycogen. So we, and water is pretty heavy. I mean, if you imagine that for every bit of glycogen that we have, we have to have tons of water added onto it, we would weigh so much. And that would be tough for, for us as humans or any other animals um, to, to carry that extra weight of that water. So triglycerides are, are part of the solution to that problem, right? They, can, they allow us to carry a lot of stored energy without hydrating it, and it's not heavy for us to carry. Uh, it can eventually be heavy, um, but I won't really get into that. Um, so, and uh, okay, so so now once we have um, these triglycerides in the storage form uh, in fats, right? Let's say someone wants to, to or some some person uh, wants to lose some weight. They they 
or even if they don't want to lose weight, maybe if someone's fasting, uh, the point is that there are times where we can take these, 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 these stored fatty acids that are stored in these triglycerides and we can mobilize them for energy, right? We can free them up. So there are enzymes called lipases. Lipases. Lipases are the enzymes that free up fatty acids during fasting, right? During, during fasting or during long-term use for energy. So when you're fasting, your, your body is tapping on fats for energy. So, um, or, or basically that's fasting you can imagine is a long-term use of energy. Or if you're running like a, like some sort of distance race, right? Uh, your body is tapping on a long-term energy source and that would be fats. So, um, this is, this is particularly important for some, some animals that have extended periods of activity. Uh, I think one example that I read about was like birds that, that fly south for the winter. Right, so they they fly based on season. They have to fly for a very long time, right? So during that time, they're going to be tapping on fats for energy. Okay, cool. So that that hopefully wraps up the energy storage idea a little bit. Uh, now the next thing I want to talk about is insulation. So a lot of adipose tissue is located specifically beneath the skin. Okay, so beneath the skin, and it, it helps insulate. Insulate basically just means to help prevent heat loss, right? It helps contain that heat. So it's important in keeping us and other animals warm, right? Not warm. So keep, helps, keeps, uh, helps keep us warm. So now this is not super important for us as humans. It is important in some cases, but it's not super important for humans because um, we, have, we have homes that we could, and shelters, right? Uh, and we have clothes, so we have clothes that can keep us warm. Now, I understand that not everyone has a home, not everyone has clothes, but generally speaking, a human uh, understands the idea of clothes and homes, and, and we, we can use clothes to keep us warm, we can use our homes to help us uh, stay, stay warm. We also even have central heating units that, that can help keep us warm, we know how to make fires, things like that. So, for humans, insulation is not the most essential function, right? But this is especially important for animals like polar bears, right? Because polar bears live in very, very cold climates, right? And they do have uh, fur that help keep, helps keep them warm. But when they're hibernating, even in the, if if they're um, even if they're in a cave that's more, you know, that's helping, you know, reduce the wind chill factor, they still need to stay warm. And so, um, especially when they're hibernating, they're not really moving around uh, to keep themselves warm. So they it's having having that uh layers of fat to 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 help keep keep the heat inside of them especially during hibernation is essential for them so um i hope that video was helpful in understanding triglycerides their structure and their functions thank you for watching yo if you found that video helpful don't forget to like comment subscribe for more content and if you know anybody who might find the videos helpful then please share it with them thanks happy studying